Today we're going to be talking about the picker and what the picker does. Is it necessary? What do we use it for? How do we use it? And all of the above. Hey, we're Chris and Teresa, and we would love to guide you on your fiber arts journey. We own a successful fiber processing mill and online needle felting business experienced at raising all fiber animals and have renovated a hundred year old school into a fiber arts retreat center. Processing, needle felting, yarn, roving, fiber animals, and sustainable agriculture are all topics discussed here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for advice, information, tips, and getting your questions answered on all things from farm to needle. So pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be inspired while you learn. This is YouTube. All right, so here we are going to demonstrate the picker in all aspects of picking. And what we have here is we have Romney wool that we have dyed after we washed it. For here at the mill, for all of our products that you find at Bear Creek Felting, we dye the wool for roving before we cart it. For all of our yarns, our dyed yarns, we dye them after processing. So this is a shade of green that when we dyed it, it came out all sorts of funky different shades instead of a consistent nice green. So what we want to do is combine this so that when we card it, it's going to end up being one shade of green, completely consistent, no striping. And so the first thing we need to do is run it through the picker to combine it the colors and to open up the fibers. As you can see, they're not felted, but they just need to be fluffed open a little bit. You see how, I mean, they easily pull apart and I could stand here and do this with my hands, but we have the picker that does it for us. And and the picker is a, is, is a very simple machine. It's, it's next to the scanner. It's probably the simplest machine here in the mill. It just has a conveyor belt that has speeds as well as a beater. It's called a beater inside this drum and, and it's there's four areas where there's rows of, of about three quarters of an inch spikes that spin around, grab the fiber and fluff it open. Doesn't rip it. it it's, it's very gentle in that process. I can control the speed of that beater. So if I'm doing a real, real fine Crea alpaca that's very fragile, um, very weak, I'm going to slow that beater down so that it, it's as gentle as possible on that fiber. But so it goes in here, it feeds in here, it rolls it around, and then it shoots it out into this little room we have built into this, this bin. And that at that point, we can spritz on conditioners. We have a spinning conditioner and we also have a cohesive. So if we are doing 100% Surrey alpaca, which has a tendency to pull apart, not hold together at the rest of the processing stages, we can spritz on a cohesive that aids in holding that fiber together so that we can get it through the carding stage and through the, pick, the drafting and spinning stage. We only use that cohesive with those real fine slippery camelid fibers. We don't use them at all with any wools that we do. But we do use a spinning conditioner because down here at the mill we are constantly battling static. We try to keep it about 70 to 80 percent humidity down here, but especially in the winter time sometimes it's hard to get it up that high, whereas spinning conditioner uh, helps with that, those static issues. And this is also the stage that we do a lot of blending. We do a lot of blending of, say we're doing a 30% blend with Angora Rabbit and Romney Wool. So this is where we would do that blending at. We would have our two fibers weighed out and ready to go. And then we would, we would just alternate them as it goes in here and, and the picker blends them together for us so that they're ready for carding. I also do this with the alpaca in wool, a mohair. Um, we do our sock yarn is a blend of mohair and angora and, or excuse me, alpaca and wool. And this is where we blend those fibers together. So you kind of get the point here that, that this is, a, this is a, a very necessary machine in the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start it up so that you can see what this is gonna look like after it runs through the picker. I've turned the machine on. It 
It's fairly quiet. It's not that noisy at all. You can see the conveyor belt is moving. This is an area that you want to make sure your fingers don't get in because it will just suck them right in there. So here we are with our wool. I'll just set it down on the conveyor belt and in it goes. And you can hear it flapping around and opening up as, it, as the drum grabs it and pulls it in. This is also where, where I, I keep an eye out for any type of pieces of debris, whether it's straw, um, cockleburrs, you know, chaff, any t any anything like that, and I'll pull it out, or any bad portions of wool, like this right there that just got sucked in. It was a little second cut that I would like to have pulled off. Okay, right here, there's a little cockleburr right now that it's all picked. We're going to spritz on, being this is wool, we don't need the cohesive, so we're going to spritz on the the spinning conditioner, and I just just put very little on here and I toss it around and that's it and then from here I put it over onto the dry rack so that it's ready tomorrow morning we'll card this so that is picking <laughs>